Well, I want to talk about where it all starts, the foundations, the, the, the deeper understanding that we would all like about what's going on in the world, and particularly what's going on in the universe as a whole, how it got this way, and how uh, any understanding that we might have of the universe as a whole could be applied locally to our own situations and to some of the phenomenon that we're interested in in our daily lives. Um, Bernie uh, talked about the constants uh, of the um, universe and uh, physical laws of the universe, and um, I won't say a whole lot more about that, but it's worth um, just reflecting on the fact that it seems that uh, there are a few numbers, a few constants, a few parameters that uh, determine a great deal of what goes on in the universe and um, the phenomenon that take place within it. And these constants seem, at least, to be somewhat independent and rather arbitrary, and yet we know that in several cases these constants um, are very finely tuned to support the kind of universe that we see and the life that we experience here. And if they were different, uh, the universe would have been different and we would not have evolved to have noticed this. So um, there's a question about how it got there, how those constants got that way. And by the way, how did all that stuff get out there in particular places? How did all this get to be the way it is? Um, even if we knew what those constants, those parameters were that determined the physical laws and the properties of matter and energy, we would still have this question of the initial condition. Why is it that the cosmic background radiation, the oldest thing we can measure, is not uniform? As a matter of fact, it seems to have some pattern to it. Big, big mystery. Um, how did, it, how did it get that way, and how are these parameters derived? Could the universe be some other way? The constants could be determined a lot of different ways. Here are four of them by some supernatural being. Perhaps they are determined at random, and there are a lot of different sub-universes that have different values for these constants, in which case we sort of invoke an anthrop anthropic principle. Um, those constants and those laws could have been in some way determined by our interactions with them, our ob observations. We create it all by observing, uh, somewhat like similar uh, previous uh, talk. Or the, the case that I'm more interested in, perhaps that these constants really aren't independent and arbitrary, but rather are mathematically derived and related in some interesting way. So I'll give a couple of thoughts about that. I'm reminded of Clark's third law, and by the way, he had added a fourth law in 99. For every expert, there's an equal and opposite expert. <laughs> if you've ever been involved in patent litigation, as I have, this is very uh, apropos. So I think it's uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from God. We're really not imaginative enough to think of what advanced technology, really advanced technology, could be like. And... Um, to say, as some would say, that they can't be here because it would violate the speed of light and too much energy is involved and all that kind of stuff is nonsense. They have complete control of time and space and a lot more things that we haven't even thought of yet. So um, if you think you have a guardian angel or some interaction with God, I don't see any way to rule out that as being interaction with really advanced beings and advanced technology. But Beside the point, back to physical constants, here are some of them. Um, Bernie gave a nice uh, summary of, of a particular list. Michio Kaku thinks maybe there are 19 numbers, enumerates those. John Baez counts 26 numbers. Martin Rees's book, Just Six Numbers, which was a very nice read, um, uh, derives the basis in an entirely different way using dimensionless numbers, the number of spatial dimensions, and so on. Another interesting way of saying how many degrees of freedom are there Maybe the real number is somewhere between 6 and 26. I don't, I don't know. Um, the usual assumptions that are made before we start thinking about these things, I have some trouble with, not because the principles are necessarily uh, invalid for any reason, but because of the way they're usually thought about. Materialism usually means there's stuff out there. There are things in space, whether those things are particles and fields or whether they are strings or some other abstract structure, um, I'm much more tending these days toward thinking about differences and boundaries and transitions rather than the objects. To me, the, um, the differences define the objects, not the other way around. 
and there's some precedents for this. I'll maybe be able to go into that a little bit more later. Reductionism, the idea that the whole is equal to some of the parts. People always say, no, no, something emerges when you get all the parts together that wasn't there among the parts, forgetting that if you know the parts and all their interactions, you really do have the whole. Nevertheless, reductionism is not the only way to understand things, and I would like to promote more constructivism, that is, starting from first principles or no principles and building upwards, as well as reductionism taking things apart and trying to figure out how they work. So the usual uh, interpretation of that bothers me a bit. Randomness and the idea that there are truly causeless events at the core of physics, I've totally um, bogus that one. It seems to me that quantum measurement is not random at all, and there's a big mistake that we've been making by making that assumption. And it is an assumption in quantum mechanics. It just happens to work very well, so we believe it. But uh, I don't think anything is truly random in the sense of being a causeless event, even at the core of physics. Cause and effects might, might be the most pernicious about, of these in the sense that everyone thinks about cause and effect as a unidirectional uh, thing, and uh, le this leads to the idea of time as a dimension and a flowing in one direction and so on. Bad idea. It seems to me that physics is telling us that everything is symmetrical in time and that uh, all relationships of the causal nature are bidirectional and uh, uh, influence travels in both directions. If we take these assumptions and uh, formalize them in some way, we usually get what's called a system of axioms. You could say the standard model of um, uh, physics is a kind of set of formal assumptions, quantum theory in mathematics, set theory and predicate calculus and so forth. So we tend to formalize this and one might say that the more complex, well let's say the less complex the set of axioms and beliefs are, the more likely it is that we're close to the bottom, that we're close to really understanding something, we're closer to bedrock, and the more complex things are the reverse. So here's an example from mathematics, the zermelo frankel and the axiom of choice set theory, eight axioms, two of which at least are infinite axiom schema. Now, I ask you, does this look like we really understand the foundations of set theory, or maybe sets are not such a good idea in the first place, which is where, where, it's where I go. Uh, Henry Poincaré said later generations will regard set theory as a disease from which one has recovered. Well, we haven't recovered yet. This is really one of the most fundamental things that are taught in mathematics. Um, congruent versus deep models. A congruent model is really a kind of a theory. It's an abstract something or another that we sometimes um, try to tune to be the same shape as whatever it is we're modeling. And so the more tuning is necessary, that added assumptions and FUD factors show up. And, and this is not necessarily explaining things, but merely modeling them so we can do stuff and try things to the model that will then be reflected in the, in the real world somehow. Whereas a deeper model has something that's simpler and is really more fundamental and more like how it really is, how the, the uh, phenomenon or whatever it is is actually generated and tells us something more about its place in the world. Here are some discrete physical models that I think are really um, becoming more and more interesting. <coughs> String theory hasn't quite paid off, but still there's something very importantly uh, correct about it, even if it's not the whole story. Even in the standard model, group symmetries as an abstract uh, idea can model three of the four forces, at least in some respects. Uh, some of you may have seen causal dynamical triangulations, a terrible name if I've ever heard one. <laughs> it's the uh, 